Hi, today we are going to learn the system of arpeggios over all of our guitar fingerboard. We will learn five uh, basic uh, positions, arpeggio positions, and we'll see how, the, how we can implement them and create great improvisation over a minor blues by Django Reinhardt called Swing 48. First, let's start with the song, with the blues. One, two, three, and... <laughs> It's a basic minor blues progression, but in the gypsy jazz style, we usually prefer to play the minor six shapes. So you have G minor six for four bars, and then C minor six for two bar, and G minor six again. And then when you improvise, you think about D7, but in the accompaniment, you can play E flat seven, D, and G minor again. And then you can play it like in the ending to get back to G minor again. It sounds like that. Four bars for G minor six, two for C minor six, two for G minor six, E flat, B, and G minor. E flat, this is the progression. In a moment I will teach you the melody of this blues, but first let's understand the basic concept of playing with uh, arpeggios. So arpeggios are broken chords. If we have G minor or G minor 6 in our accompaniment, we want to take this chord and play it as a broken, not on a, as a whole chord, but note by note. And this is the arpeggio. Now, we need to know the arpeggio is so good, so we can create melodies moving from one arpeggio to another. And for that, we need to know the arpeggios all over the fingerboard. So you know that basically, you have 12 positions for each arpeggio. If you take those fingers and you hold them, you know, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 position to look for the arpeggio inside this position and inside this position. But you'll get sometimes weird fingering. So, you know, I am good with five positions. And if you have those five positions all over your fingerboard, I have G minor here, I have G here, is the second, I start from here, then I have the third one, and here I have the fourth one, and here I have the fifth one. And I also have two more uh, positions that are horizontal positions that are crossing all the fingerboard from the beginning to the end. So, you know, learning arpeggios deeply means to learn the five positions or and the horizontal positions and to, to see the arpeggio all over your fingerboard. And you need to do it for each and every chord. So when you improvise here, you know exactly where G minor in this area and you don't need to jump. You just see the connection between each, each note that you are playing to the next arpeggio, all right? So this is the basic system to learn the arpeggios all over the fingerboard. Seven positions for each one, five vertical and one horizontal. It will be enough for us in these lessons to use only five positions that I'm going to show you. But um, first, let's start with the melody of swing 48. It starts with the note C, and then B flat, and then you have five times this thing. One, two, three, five, four, five, five times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. All right? And then C, D flat, C, B flat, G. It's from the minor blues scale. 
So all together, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and then this thing. This is the sentence again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. And then you have the second sentence, which starts with the note D, A flat. E flat D B flat that goes to F sharp All right and for the last note F sharp you can play this chord You have here F sharp D and B flat or A sharp you can also add the note E here and it's kind of the augmented chord with the 9 so let's play the whole melody slowly 1, 2, 3, 4 D, C, 3, 4 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 blues scale it goes again two three and and now you have G A flat E flat to D and slide from B flat to A sharp to F sharp we will start with the basic G minor vertical position now you have this chord that I'm sure you already played G minor and if you just want to arpeggiate to arpeggiate it you can just play it string by string and then you have the arpeggio but in the beginning you see that we jump from the fifth degree to the first degree to the fifth degree so we want to make it by the order so you have G and we add B flat here and then again D and again G B flat D G B flat and you have this arpeggio very simple G B flat D G B flat D G B flat next you have C minor so we will learn the vertical position for C minor here which is the same you just play the strings that you see the notes that, that you already play but let's add the third degree here again so you have C E flat and then just arpeggiate the basic chord you play C E flat G C E flat G so this is the second arpeggio and the third arpeggio we are going to take D if you have this D like C turn above this is C turn above it's D so you just arpeggiate what you play D F sharp A D F sharp Arpeggios are also a great technique exercise. So just play it. Get used to play this shape. Start slowly and then increase the tempo and play it like a round exercise. also um, improve your technique so now you learned the three basic arpeggio positions and you want to create melody with them it means that each time you have G minor you'll play the, the arpeggio of G minor each time you have C minor you'll play the arpeggio of C minor and if each time you have D7 you'll play the arpeggio of D 
And you know, in the beginning, you need to sound like an exercise. Just play the arpeggios up and down the fret, the fingerboard, until you know where to move from one to another. And then you'll want, you'll want it to sound a little bit like more music. So there are a few tips you can use. The first thing is not just play the arpeggio, but reach to a note. It can be half tone approach, it can be sometimes my, the, the trill that I use all the time is down on the note of the, that I want to play, up for a note which is one tone above, pull off, down half tone below and up again. Down, up, pull off, down, up. And if you use this thing and you change the rhythm of the arpeggio, let's say, and then, you see I created a melody, so I'm, I play with the rhythm inside the arpeggio and I add this trill here and there. instead of playing. And then I have a, like an interesting sentence. The third important tip is use your melody inside your uh, improvisation and it will enrich the arpeggio. If you play the and then you get to D mi C minor then you'll play the melody and then the arpeggio and you connect the arpeggios with the melody and then you can create your new improvisation. Let's hear an example. One, two, three and G minor, three and then for C minor and melody and again let's do the melody I played a little bit with the arpeggios and with the ornament, with the time and with the melody. Now let's add two more uh, horizontal arpeggios. Horizontal arpeggios are all over the fingerboard and it will help us move from one area to another. The first is G minor horizontal arpeggio. We start here with the note G and we play two notes on the sixth string, G and B flat. And then we play one note on the fifth string, which is D. And then you have this shape. You see it? Now we'll do the same shape again from the fourth string, from G. G, B flat, and D. So you use only two fingers to play this arpeggio. And this is a shape Django Reinhardt used with two fingers. And then we will end it with G, B flat, and D, with this shape, G, B flat, and D. So we have again, and G, B flat, D. Now, when we go back, I just want to change one thing. I don't go back through this G, but through this G. It's easier for me. And then the same thing. So I have ascending position and descending position. Okay, now it's a great technical exercise. Play it as a technical exercise.
The second horizontal position we are going to learn now is the diminished horizontal, horizontal position. You know that if you play a diminished chord over the third degree of the dominant chord, then you get the flat 9 sound. So F sharp is the third degree of uh, D7, and if we play a diminished arpeggio from the note uh, F sharp, so we have a 7 flat 9 sound, and this is a great sound in the gypsy and jazz improvisation world. The diminished is very easy to remember. You start from F sharp and it's symmetric, so you have one and a half tone, you hear, see here, and then from here you have one and a half tones, and then from here you have one and a half tones, and then from here one and a half tones, from here, from F sharp, one and a half tones, and from C, you have one and a half tone, and you can start it from each note. If we had F sharp and A, you can start the same thing from A, from C, you have C. Whenever you start it, you can start it from E flat. It's the same shape. You can just start the same shape on each one of the notes. And again, it's a great technique exercise. I like, for example, in the first string to add another tone and a half, and then I explore different places on the fingerboard. You can also go back, play on the first. It's the same tone and a half, so you can play with it. over the finger bowl. Now you have the horizontal position that can help you get to the higher position. So if you played G minor position over here, you can also play the same thing over C minor over here. And you have another position, you know, to play in the higher register on the fingerboard. If you had C minor here, you can use the same shape to play G minor over here. It's the same thing that starts from G. And the horizontal position can help you combine them all, because if you take use the G horizontal position, and it helps you reach to this C and this G and you can use the diminished position to get back to this era. Alright? So you have the vertical position, you can use them here as well, and the horizontal position that can connect the two. Alright? I will give you an example how I use it. It's a great tip, you know, when you improvise, is if a few choruses to, you know, to let your solo grow, is in each uh, chorus play or at least start in a different register. And then, you know, the solo starts here and it grows each chorus to uh, another area. So I will give you an example now. I want you to sit with those arpeggios with the idea of connecting the different areas on the fingerboard with the horizontal positions. Sit with it, you know, it takes time. It's maybe easy to understand, but it's not so easy to, to do. You know, I will give you an example. I'll try to use only what I show you. I won't play anything else. So it will be, you know, an example. Uh, of improvisation with the tools you already have. Take your time, enjoy this thing, and try to create your own solos and melodies. Bye bye. One, two, three, and.
that takes me to this area and the diminish takes me back. Thank you. 